Google Earth's sky feature brings the entire night sky down to your fingertips, yet there are areas of blank data which fuel cover-up and conspiracy theories. Let's investigate some of the myths surrounding the Google Sky blank spots. One particular blank spot sits next to the constellation of Orion and is tied in with the 2012 Doomsday Hoax. Proponents describe how a rogue brown dwarf known as Nibiru will impact or come very close to Earth, causing untold destruction. Supporters of this theory surmise that the blank spot is an effort by Google or a government to hide evidence of Nibiru. So what are we looking at exactly? When we view the blank spot, Google is showing you data from the digitized sky survey as shown in the copyright notice at the bottom of the screen. This shows us that Google did not create the data, but instead, it comes from a single source. In fact, both Wikisky and Microsoft Worldwide Telescope also share the digitized sky survey in their programs. When we view Wikisky or Worldwide Telescope directly, we can see they don't have a blank spot. This indicates the problem is with Google itself. The next logical step is to obtain the data behind the blank spot from the source material provided in the digitized sky survey. It's important to understand that the DSS is comprised of multiple smaller surveys, but we must find out which survey is being used in Google Sky. Google's webpage tells us to use both data from the POSS1 and POSS2 surveys. The original survey known as POSS1 was produced between 1950 and 1958. When photographic methods improved, the later survey POSS2 was produced between 1987 and 2002. Let's be thorough and compare both surveys with Google Sky. This will ensure we're using the exact same data that Google uses and in doing so confirm the data comes from the same date. To view behind the Google blank spot, we must obtain the DSS data from the Space Telescope Science Institute's online survey. Entering the same coordinates used in Google Sky and selecting the POSS1 option, the first 1958 dataset will be returned. Let's save that file and then select the POSS2 survey. We now have both the original and follow-up surveys. Going back to Google Sky, you can see the blank spot is in view. Since we're going to compare the data we obtained, let's highlight the blank area for clarity and add a few labels of known stars so we have reference points. Now let's overlay the original DSS data from the POSS1 survey. Notice how all of the stars outside the blank spot line up exactly? Let's look at that again. Star positions are like fingerprints, and since our data matches up perfectly, we know the Google Sky View and the DSS data are exactly the same. Right away we can see the stars behind the Google blank spot. In a matter of minutes we were able to bypass Google, locate the original source material, and view the missing stars. The case for conspiracy isn't looking good. But let's be thorough and overlay the POSS2 data. Again, the stars match up exactly, both inside and outside of the blank spot. The only difference is the newer data is cleaner and contains fewer photographic artifacts due to newer techniques. Since these surveys were created on different dates, had there been a brown dwarf hurtling towards Earth, we would expect to see movement or an increase in brightness of a single object between the two surveys. As we can see, nothing has changed, so each object in view is a known stationary star. But before we close the case on this theory, let's explore one more option. Proponents of the blank spot theory might argue that the DSS data can't be trusted, and that it may have been doctored as part of the cover-up. To address this, let's put away Google and the DSS to make our own observation. Stepping outside and away from the computer, I'm using a Smith Cassegrain telescope to take up-to-date astrophotos of the area beside Orion. With an up-to-date photo in hand, let's overlay it on the DSS data. You can see the stars line up and that I photograph the exact same region of sky. So there you have it. The original 1958 survey, the follow-up 2002 survey, and my personal 2011 survey all agree. You can see there is nothing out of the ordinary within this region of sky, and so we can conclude that the Google Sky cover-up and conspiracy theory is nothing more than an internet hoax. 
Out of curiosity, if Nibiru was present in this shot, how would it look? According to proponents, Nibiru is a brown dwarf, so if we took a known brown dwarf such as Gliese 229b and positioned it out by Pluto, this is what you would see. That's pretty unmistakable if you ask me. Remember, even though brown dwarfs are hard to see at great distance and generally need infrared astronomy equipment, if you placed it out by Pluto, then our own Sun would illuminate it with a calculated magnitude of 2. This calculation was provided by astronomer Phil Plate. We can safely conclude that this cover-up theory is bogus, but why does Google Sky have a blank spot? One thing to note is there are multiple blank spots in Google Sky, indicating a larger problem, but how does it work? Google starts with the DSS data to create their presentation of the night sky. However, the photographic process is not perfect and it introduces many artifacts onto the plates, such as varying levels of brightness, noise, color saturation, and vignetting. Each photographic plate covers an area of sky only 6.5 degrees square. This means Google must stitch thousands of individual black and white plates together to make up a color version of the night sky, starting with imperfect data. This is done through advanced software, but the process is made more complicated as each 2D plate must be mapped onto a 3D sphere, simulating the cosmos around the viewer. As this mapping occurs, errors can crop up in the stitching process. The entire process has many steps, and each one can introduce errors. Google Sky is a fantastic system, but it's not perfect, which is why it shouldn't be used as a primary source for sky survey data. It's best used for education or as a quick reference tool, but never to acquire serious sky survey images directly. To recap, Google Sky uses the digitized sky survey for their data source. We know the stitching process is complicated and error prone. We independently obtain the source data with the same location and time as Google Sky. We then obtained our own data via telescope. In all cases, nothing nefarious or out of the ordinary was shown. The Google Sky blank spot is a glitch in the software, not a cover-up or a conspiracy to hide Nibiru or the truth. Be sure to try the methods outlined in this video yourself. You can apply these techniques to any blank spot in Google Sky.